Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on a Tuesday here, 20th of August. The Tuesday before the Friday, that's Jackson Hole. Let's see what we got here going into the open and what we expect the day ahead. Pretty decent risk on day yesterday. Uh, but the first chart, we're going to start with Bobby here. Um, Boons. Big gap down that was not filled yesterday. Closed up at 96. Opened 68. Didn't even come close to uh, filling that gap. We did trade down to um, 82 on some of this uh, fiscal stimulus news from Germany. Uh, has this turned? It's the uh, $24 million question. Hard to say. It would have been nice closing uh, below the figure yesterday, but we closed at 20. Uh, but no doubt, this does look like a turn situation. Big capitulatory green bar, followed by some news, and then a little bit of follow through. Need another red bar today um, for this truly to turn. And we were talking yesterday amongst colleagues that where's the point? Where's the where's the squeal point for Bobby here? Um, One seventy-seven. The figure is is something that's of interest to me. It's basically you know two hundred basis points. Uh, below the highs, anyone who bought in this region then starts to become underwater. And the point is this, uh, none of this makes any sense. And whoever is buying this stuff is buying it for safety. And what's ironic or what doesn't make sense is this to me looks like one of the least safe investments out there. Uh, so this, you could argue it's the same thing with subprime when, ironically, German banks were pouring into AAA-rated 4% yielding subprime derivative contracts. They look safe on the, per on the surface because they were AAA-rated, but they were really actually one of the least safe um, fixed income instruments in the world. Boons, obviously, historically, have been one of the safest assets of all time. Uh, but you just have to question boons at minus 70 basis points are different than boons that are yielding 1.5%. Um, this is incredibly, incredibly uh, wobbly, I think. Um, so I don't know how this is going to end. It won't be straightforward. It never is, but watching boons very closely. Now, the derivative of Boons, of course, is going to be Euro dollar, which made a higher high yesterday marginally, but then uh, just drifted back down. Now we're at 83. Not bullish. Yesterday it was not bullish, closing down at 78. Um, so I don't know what to do with Euro dollar. We like to just break trade this through the highs up at 15. We'll have to see. And then Euro yen. More bullish. Uh, we got a little bit carried away. We did not trade this. We just held longs and then we had to cut. Anyway, this is marginally bullish, but I would say really just neutral still. Um, you know, if you think the range now is 120, 117, 50. We're, we're at the bottom of this range, uh, waiting for signs of a turn. Yesterday should have been the turn. Equities much higher. Negative news and boons. But let's face it, didn't turn. So price is not confirming our belief system. We're not going to marry this. Um, we're just going to be patient. But we are trigger, our hands are on the trigger for Euro Yen longs in good size. Um, because if boons turn, uh, risk stays steady 
or if Powell goes massive uh, dove, Euro Yen is gonna is gonna throttle higher um, and leave a market. Just look at this chart. Leave a market that's very very short and basically short below 120 um, at risk. Anyway, watching that Aussie uh, minutes last night. Kind of, they were just reinforcing themes, um, but perhaps watered down uh, the commitment to more easing. Uh, is the research summary that best summarizes minutes last night? Aussie's 30 points higher. We are looking and watching this uh, 6820 area becomes bullish engulfing above 89. Is today the day that Aussie is going to uh, make a move? Maybe. Maybe. Let's look at the the hourly chart. Looks very constructive. Kind of 95 is more important than 89. Um, but we'll have to see this Aussie. A lot of people are going to have drawn this line here. Uh, let's see if it uh, becomes useful or even this line here some sort of pennant here now. No, that's broken. Um, anyway, we're watching this top side level in Aussie. We know there's going to be risk there. Uh, looking to get into um, into longs up through this uh, 68.20 area. What else is out there? Cable and Euro Sterling. Sterling got hit yesterday, but nothing really to, to write home about. Euro Sterling went higher, uh, but again, really a nothing day. We're watching this 90-90 um, level is the key in, in Euro Sterling. Boris is, is pushing. He put some stuff down on paper yesterday about the backstop and trying to resolve all of this. Uh, if the EU comes and meets halfway on this, Sterling will uh, appreciate if they stand tough and uh, hold the line, uh, Sterling will have a hard time going up. Looks like Sterling's turning to us, uh, but unfortunately it's one of these deals you just have to watch the news. Um, you know, the news is, is negative, obviously. Boris looks like he has no idea what he's doing. Um, but that's also scary in itself, just like Trump, who also looks like he has no idea what he's doing. Sometimes his policies um, have very positive effects on the dollar or on the stock market. Um, and so this could be a similar situation. You have a buffoon uh, who's gambling Texas Hold'em style within the political arena. Uh, and people are discounting that this could end up really, really positive. Uh, I'm not discounting anything. This could blow up and be horrible, and cable could go down to 105, but this also could just get funnily settled, um, and cable goes back to 135. So open-minded here, minor bias for higher cable, just because that's what the chart is telling us. This looks like a turn here. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of clear air above 122.15. Um, so, just watching that and trying to keep our one eye on the headlines and the political. Um, we're getting a bit old for that kind of trigger sensitive stuff, but we are watching it um, nonetheless. We have CBI today um, out of the UK, CBI Industrial Order Expectations on a quiet calendar day. We also have Euro, uh, German PPI, which should not uh, move markets too, too much. What else is out there? Um, let's look at ES. We think this is a sell uh, in between this sort of 38 uh, and, and 58 area. Looks like a trap break up here. Uh, we do expect probably a marginal new high. Um, but then, of course, everything is going to come down to how dovish Powell is on Friday. 
no point in making guesses on that. You just have to be ready and say, if he's super dovish, we're going to do this. If he's super hawkish, we're going to do this. There's also not much of a point to doing the specifics of that mental gymnastics yet because we have to see where price is on Thursday. So we'll just wait and see. Uh, but in the meantime, this looks like it's going to be extended if we get prices between 29.38 and 58. Uh, and it's a sell zone for us. Not a whole heck of a lot else out there. We have this big elephant in the room, which is Jackson Hole at the end of the week. Uh, we have FOMC minutes tomorrow, and then we have your we have European PMIs on Thursday. So we might be in for another quiet day today. Aussie uh, is of particular interest in case this thing starts to decide to sneak higher. For that to happen, we'll need risk on. Obviously, hopefully, dollar China would end up going a little bit lower. Risk will be steady. Uh, U.S. rates will be slightly lower or at least steady um, for this to work. We're not, we don't have our hopes too, too high for a lot of action today, but we are watching a, a few different themes, focusing mainly on boons uh, and seeing how they're trading on the downside. As we just said, Aussie top side, um, and then Euro and Euro Yen, depending on direction of boons. All right, I've said enough today, people. Good luck out there. Uh, make some dough, and uh, you know what? I will uh, see you tomorrow. Ciao.